What's the first thing you want to do when you pulled your MIG welder out of your box when it was brand new? You want to stack them dimes, didn't you? Yeah, everybody does. Well, on this episode of AC Designs Garage, I'm going to show you how super fast and easy it is to set your machine up and stack them dimes like a bank teller on a Friday evening. Coming up. All right, guys, let's get the machine set up so we can uh, put down the best weld that we can. Uh, today, I'm just going to start with whatever the factory's calling for. This is my old Millermatic 185. This thing's like 30 years old. I had this in high school, and I've been out a while. So we're going to be 023 ER70 S-6. We're running 7525 Argon CO2. So what we're going to do on the 023, you're going to come across... To the eighth inch, that's what we're doing. We just got some old eighth inch scrap. You can put your voltage on three and your wire speed on 70. And like I said, you can uh, you can change these up and dial them into your preference after you get welding. But I just wanted to start, you know, simple. All right, I I run my uh, 7525 about 20 20 to 23 CFH. That's what I run it at. Seems to work good for me. All right, here's some uh, test pieces we done yesterday. I was just playing around with it just to get her tuned in good. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get set up right here and I'm gonna show you how I manipulate the torch, if you wanna call it. You know, you can do circle, cursive fees or Cs. All right, guys, this is how I usually do it, right there in the corner of the joint. I'll focus my wire right there, if you can see it. It'll go in here. And I'll pull the trigger and I'll get it going up. Watch your puddle come down. And I basically let this touch down here on the bottom. It'll give you your exact space. So you just come up and loop, come up and loop, come up and loop. And you want to keep the space in between these as consistent as you can. The more consistent you keep it. So you're going to come up here and loop down, come down. And make sure you're keeping the right angle where it's getting both sides. That's You want to tie both of these into it. So... That's why I like to do it like this and just come down and come down. But I'll show you with the marker. Maybe you can see it a little better. We're going to focus today just on doing the cursive and the sawtooth. I've got just enough uh, scrap that I have cut up. It's already ground clean. You want all your mill scale off. You really want this stuff as clean as you can get. I'll wipe this off in isopropyl alcohol or acetone before I get ready to weld. But you want to get that old crusty, nasty mill scale off. It'll just weld better and it looks a lot better. So this being the corner of the joint, that's what that line is. Basically, if you had a piece of, like we're using a T-joint, like that. This is how the, the cursive fee, I start right in the middle, and I'm not left-handed, so I can't show you. And I'm going to be dragging. I drag my welds. I don't push. I have saw a lot of research on them. And Jody at Welding Tips and Tricks, which I think is probably one of the best welders I've seen around and great instructional guy. Go check him out on YouTube. He's got an awesome channel. This is how I'm going to do it. And, and the Sharpie is going to represent the, the MIG gun. So I, I drag all my stuff. So you have, to get, you have to get way down in front, and I'll show you how I set up for it here in a second to where you can see it good. But you'll start right there in the root, and you'll come up, and you'll loop. Come up, and you'll loop. Come up and you'll loop. And basically that one piece that I just showed you, we'll show you again here in a second. This is how it was done. And the trick is you want the space in between each one of these as consistent as you can get. It's almost like you gotta have a beat going to where you go loop, 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 loop. Just it count whatever you need to do, but you want the, the space in the because if you go way out like this and loop and then you do another loop here and then you go way out here that's what each one of those little circles is going to look like so you're going to have spacing so it's practice you guys can do it even beginners it don't take long after you can get to where you can just run a flat bead try this out just get you some scrap i actually took a piece of angle iron that's why it's beveled i just split a piece of angle iron have to make my my little coupons out of so i've only got two i've got this one and this was the circ the cursor fee one that I've done, I'm gonna show you again. I got some good arc shots on this we're gonna put in here. And I'm gonna do the, on the back side, I'm gonna do the little sawtooth pattern, what I call it, like I'm getting ready to show you. And then this one here will be a new cursive E one. We'll try, try to do a little better on it. So on what I call the sawtooth, it's basically the same thing. 
That's like your T-joint here. It's already tacked together. You'll have tack air, tack air. So I'm dragging. So I'm gonna try to get my hand out of your way so you can see. So we'll start right there in the corner of the joint and you will come up and, and it's the same way to get consistent whatever you're going. The closer, more space perfect, like between here and here that you can get this, the more uniform it's going to look. So that, that's the whole real trick to this. Cause like I said, we're using factory settings on the machine. I don't have any crazy, you got to have 19.4 volts and 70.2 inches per minute, minute on the wire speed. So that's the trick is your consistency. To, so just keep trying. So I'm gonna run up like this. I'm gonna come back down. I'm just gonna zigzag back and forth tying these two pieces together. Like I said, we're wanting to keep our spacing in between each one of the little saw teeth, if you want to call them like that. Just try to keep the space as accurate as we can. So we'll see how this one turns out. Not too shabby, that's a little bit chunkier, a little bigger a well, but we'll get it over and show it to you guys. I'll get it cleaned up with a wire brush. And that's the little uh, saw tooth, if you want to call it that. Where we just went up like a sharp tooth kind of, so. Let me know down in the comments which ones y'all like better. I I like the, I like them both. I, for looks, I like the Curse of Thief better, but Man, this bridge is over nice. Now, this is the this would be a nice strong well also. Alright, the curse of feet. not too bad let's get a little close-up on her all right guys there's a little curse of thee when it's not too bad I, I got a little out of sequence stuff but it, it's not bad I'll take it I mean, everything's burning really well and like I said this was just the one that I started down here on the bottom and looped up looped up just bring your loop back over to where it touches the one before it or maybe a little past One. This right here is the zigzaggy one, saw tooth, where you're going to call it. Kind of looks like a saw tooth. That's what I do when I'm doing it. It just comes up like a tooth on one. Shark tooth, saw tooth, whatever. And that's the Curse of Thieves one. I think I like the looks of the Curse of Thieves one a little bit better. guys hope y'all enjoyed that quick little video on stacking dimes and stuff and these are not perfect and you're not going to get perfect the more you practice and i need to stick a little more practicing on migwell the more you practice the more consistent you are the better you guys will get so i hope these little tips and tricks helped you out and remember be kind to one another jesus loves you so do we god bless we gone